Hey, in this video, we're taking a look at the ovarian and menstrual cycle. I've got this diagram on the left that we're gonna use, and then the right, I'm gonna take us through a flow chart that'll help us see the cause and effect relationship in each stage of the process here. So let's start with this. There's two main events in the ovarian and menstrual cycles. First one is menstruation or the period. And then the second event is ovulation, which is gonna take place later on in the cycles. Menstruation or the period is gonna take place on the first day of the cycle. And then ovulation is gonna take place about two weeks later, about on day 14. There's two phases that we're gonna look at as well. One is called the follicular phase. And that's all about the ovarian follicle or the, the cells that support the egg that are gonna be growing. And then the second phase that's gonna take place during the days 14 through 28 is called the luteal phase. So there's our general timeline. We have menstruation on day one. The next two weeks or so are gonna be the follicular phase. Then we'll have ovulation where the egg is released from the ovary. And then the next two weeks are gonna be the luteal phase. And at the end of that, we'll start back up at menstruation, back to day one or the beginning of the cycle again. So this is on average a 28 day cycle, though that number can vary. That's just an average that we use whenever we're talking about the cycle. On the top of the diagram on the left, we can see what's taking place in the ovary. We'll see a follicle here, which is basically an egg and all of the surrounding supporting cells of that egg. We call that a follicle. So the follicle will grow, we call this the follicular phase. The follicle will, will release the egg here, we call that ovulation. And then that follicle that remains is gonna become something else that we call a corpus luteum. And then that corpus luteum will degenerate or die off. And that's what's taking place in the ovary. The second thing on this diagram is what's happening in the uterus. And so during menstruation, we have the menstrual flow where the endometrium exits through the vaginal canal, um, and that takes place over a few days. Then we have a couple phases there. One's called the proliferative phase and the secretory phase. But what's happening there is the endometrium is growing and developing, and it's getting ready for a possible implantation. If an egg cell gets fertilized, then this endometrium needs to be ready for that fertilized zygote to implant and for it to support that fertilized zygote as it grows into an embryo and then a fetus and eventually birth. Now, if fertilization does not occur, then the endometrium, once it gets to this point, will just shed again and then we'll be back at the beginning of the process here. Now, the other two graphs we see on here show hormone levels. We're gonna look at pituitary hormones and ovarian hormones. Now, it's helpful to think of hormones as chemical messengers. They're gonna be a way for the pituitary gland, the uterus, and the ovaries to communicate back and forth and let each other know where they are in the process. So hormones, again, are just messengers for these different organs to communicate back and forth with each other. The pituitary hormones we're gonna look at are FSH and LH. FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. LH is luteinizing hormone. And those words should sound sort of familiar. We just talked about the follicle and we just talked about something called a corpus luteum, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. This is how the pituitary gland tells the ovary what to do. It tells the follicle to grow with follicle stimulating hormone, and it tells the ovary to release the egg and therefore create this leftover structure called the corpus luteum with luteinizing hormone. Finally, the other hormones we have are ovarian hormones. One is estrogen. This graph says estradiol, which is a type of estrogen or the most common type of estrogen and progesterone. And this is gonna be how the ovary communicates with the pituitary and the uterus to tell those organs what's going on with it. So let's jump back over to our timeline over here and take a look at what's happening in each stage of the ovarian and menstrual cycle. So starting with menstruation, of course the menstruation is when the endometrium is shed and this happens unless there's a pregnancy or something else going on. The main reason that we start with that and our timeline is because of all of the stages, this is the one that's observable. It's easy for a woman to tell when she's menstruating. It's not easy to tell what part of the follicular phase is happening, what part of the luteal phase is happening. Sometimes a woman can tell if she's ovulating, but often that's hard to tell exactly when that's happening. And so we start with menstruation because it's easily observable. So that's why we start with that as quote unquote day one of the timeline. So after menstruation starts, then we'll be in the follicular phase. And in the follicular phase, we're gonna to have to look at what's happening in the pituitary, as well as what's happening in the ovaries. So I have a couple boxes in my flowchart: one for the pituitary, 
one for the ovaries so that we can sort of compartmentalize what's happening where and how they communicate with each other. So the pituitary gland at this beginning follicular phase is going to release a hormone called follicle stimulating hormone. This is how the pituitary gland tells one of the follicles to grow. In the ovary, a follicle will start growing. And as that follicle grows, which we can see here, right? It starts off small. It's gonna get a little bit larger. It's gonna get a little bit larger. So that follicle is growing. The egg cell itself isn't growing larger, but the cells, the supporting cells around it are growing larger. And as they grow larger, they're gonna to start to make more estrogen. So we can see these hormones that are taking place in these graphs right here. We have increased follicle stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland, right? And that's gonna tell the follicle to grow. And towards the end of that stage, the follicle is gonna be producing more and more and more estrogen. That estrogen is gonna communicate back to the pituitary so that the pituitary knows that the follicle has grown sufficiently. So that estrogen is released from the follicle and that'll travel back up through the bloodstream to the pituitary to tell the pituitary what's going on, to tell the pituitary that the follicle has grown to a sufficient size, we call it a secondary follicle or a graphene follicle. The pituitary now knows the state of the follicle and the pituitary is gonna communicate back to the ovary to tell it to ovulate. The pituitary is gonna release a different hormone, this one, luteinizing hormone. The pituitary releases that luteinizing hormone and it's gonna tell the follicle to release the egg. So the egg gets released from the follicle there and that's gonna happen around day 14 and we call that event ovulation. And that will mark the end of the follicular phase. If we look on this graph right here, we'll see right before ovulation occurs, we see this spike in luteinizing hormone. And we've got this kind of blue threshold line here that once the, there's enough luteinizing hormone to pass that threshold, then the ovary knows, all right, time to ovulate. And then that egg cell gets released. That egg cell will travel through the fallopian tube or it has a chance to be fertilized if there's a sperm cell present in the fallopian tube. All right, quick recap of that. Menstruation marks day one. The pituitary gland will start making follicle stimulating hormone. That's gonna stimulate the ovarian follicle to grow. As the ovarian follicle grows, it's gonna make more and more estrogen. The estrogen tells the pituitary gland, hey, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. And then the pituitary gland will release luteinizing hormone. That's gonna be sort of the okay or the go ahead for the egg to be released from the ovaries. So the luteinizing hormone will stimulate the ovarian follicle to release the egg into the fallopian tube to have a chance of being fertilized. All right, now let's take a look at what happens in the luteal phase. This is gonna be the second half of the ovarian cycle. And we call it the luteal phase because the leftover cells of the follicle, so not the egg cell, but all of those supporting cells that didn't get released, those supporting cells are gonna form something called the corpus luteum, hence the name luteal phase. The purpose of the corpus luteum is to hang out in the ovary and keep making a hormone called progesterone. So let's take a look in our flowchart here what progesterone does and why we need so much of it. So the follicle is going to become that corpus luteum, and that's just going to be kind of the leftover remnant of the follicle. We call that a corpus luteum. And that's going to communicate to the uterus with progesterone. The purpose of the progesterone is to tell the uterus or to tell the endometrium in the uterus to keep growing and not to menstruate. So the progesterone tells the uterus, hey, keep developing the endometrium and don't get rid of it, don't menstruate. Basically, it's a way to tell the uterus, hey, we could still have a pregnancy. We need you to be ready for it. Keep growing the endometrium. We see the endometrium growing a lot thicker here in the second half of the ovarian cycle. So that progesterone will keep getting released. Eventually, that corpus luteum though is going to die off if there's no pregnancy. So without a pregnancy, the corpus luteum is going to die off. It's going to degenerate. It's a very sad thing, as you can see here. Poor little corpus luteum. So when the corpus luteum dies, though, it's no longer going to be releasing progesterone. And without that progesterone communication, what's the uterus going to do? Well, it's not going to keep growing the endometrium. The corpus luteum dies, no progesterone, and therefore the endometrium is going to shed. It's going to menstruate. At that point where that corpus luteum has died, now we're approaching day 28, the endometrium will shed, 
and we're just back here at day one where menstruation starts again. And so we'll just repeat this cycle over again. Now, I'm not gonna include this on the diagram, but if there was a pregnancy, well, that fertilized zygote that's becoming an embryo, it's gonna release a separate hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin. That separate hormone is gonna tell the corpus luteum, hey, don't die, stick around, keep making progesterone so that there is no menstruation so that the embryo can keep growing in the endometrium. But that's if a pregnancy occurs. As long as a pregnancy doesn't occur, the corpus luteum will die off and the endometrium gets shed. So let's go back through all of this as a recap. In day one, menstruation starts. We mark that as day one because that's an observable event. This begins the follicular phase. In the follicular phase, which lasts from days one through 14, the pituitary gland will release follicle stimulating hormone, which will stimulate the follicle to grow. The follicle, remember, is that egg cell in the ovary and all of its surrounding supporting cells. So that follicle will start to grow. That follicle will start making more and more estrogen, which will signal to the pituitary, hey, the follicle is ready. It's ready to release that egg. The pituitary will respond by releasing luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone tells the ovary, hey, go ahead, release the egg from that follicle into the fallopian tube. And we call that event ovulation. At that point, the leftover follicle, so the egg's been released, but the follicle that's still left in the ovary, it's gonna become something called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum's job is to make progesterone, which is gonna stimulate the endometrium to keep growing during the luteal phase. But eventually, near day 28, the corpus luteum will degenerate and die off. There won't be any more progesterone, and then the endometrium will be shed during menstruation. The main thing that would stop this from happening would be for a pregnancy to occur and that embryo would release HCG and that would tell the corpus luteum to keep making progesterone so that the endometrium can keep growing and support that developing embryo in the uterus. All right, so those were the stages of the ovarian and menstrual cycle. I know there's a lot of things going on here, but if you follow this flow chart and think about the cause and effect relationship of each step, then it'll help you understand how all of these different organs work together to regulate the ovarian and menstrual cycle. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.